I'm Seamless, and today I'm going to talk to you about workflow in Superior Drummer. I made a random post on Facebook, kind of on the train on the way home, because I was in New York for the last couple of days, and uh, about how, back in the day, I would try really hard to make a drum loop sound like a kit, like, or one shot kicks out, like, unrelated things sound like a kit, right? And they'll make it feel like something more realistic. And then now that we have everything we ever want, right? We have things that are crazy realistic. I spend most of my time actually trying to make it sound less realistic because the style that was generated as a result of those limitations over the years actually is quite pronounced. And then if you just have a real recording or something, you don't necessarily have that. So um, the question became after that, sort of how, what does that even mean? And what kind of like workflow do I have inside Superior Drummer? So I figured why not actually make a video? Because that's what I do, isn't it? So I have here Superior Driver. Like, th there's a difference, by the way. So the company that makes these things is called Tune Track. Um, they have a long and hilarious history in things that have nothing to do with this. But uh, now they do this. And they have Superior Drummer and they have Easy Drummer. Easy Drummer, you might be a little bit more familiar with. And it is a little bit different from Superior Drummer. Um, it's Easy Drummer's point is that they have kind of like kits that are ready to go. They're, they're, they're mixed they're like put together they have midis for them like they that were done by like real drummers so they, they're very well made for themselves and put together in their own little ecosystem and you have control over mics and whatever it's a very it's more like a contact instrument than it is a superior drummer thing because superior drummer is basically that x10 where it's the same idea we have a kit of stuff um and you still have the mic positions but there's there's so much more in depth and crazy than you get an easy drummer and not only that but the sounds themselves are not mixed they were recorded, and I think something about, I mean, on the box for um, one of these, they actually explained the process, and it was like, here's all, here's our whole list of mics we did, here's this big-ass Neve board we recorded into, and we did nothing else. So these samples are just completely just naked. And for someone like me, this is perfect, because I, it's, that allows me to, I have to be responsible for everything. I have to be in control of it, and I can treat it like a real drum recording. So as far as actually doing this, the first thing that I do whenever I open up Superior Drummer is I open up a kit that I want to use, and the Metal um, Foundry actually is my favorite kit. That was Metal Machinery, which is uh, actually... It's a little bit, yeah, okay, Metal Machinery is the Superior Drummer version of Metal Machine, I think it's called, that was for the Easy Drummer. You can actually load Easy Drummer libraries in Superior Drummer if you want. They are, however, still just those same samples with a little bit more control, but not, not by much. Um, but actual Superior Drummer libraries are like where it's at. In particular, the Metal Foundry um, is it was, it was an older kit compared to what they have a whole bunch of new stuff now. I even have some of the newer ones, but this is the one that I feel is the most like complete. And also, it, it can it, it can satisfy an extremely wide range of genres. You might be thinking, well, okay, there's metal in the name, so I want to do metal stuff. And you may even just remember Easy Drummer from its original one that made them popular for this called Drum Kit from Hell, which is a recording of um, Thomas Hawk. Okay, I don't know how to say his name, but he's the drummer for, uh, I almost just said Bleed. He's the drummer for Meshuga. And uh, famously, they used, they they sampled his kit so that they could uh, have a better recording because I think he was injured or something. But basically, they made his kit, and that became like the standard of metal drums for a while. And not that Superior Drummer isn't now, but Superior Drummer is also just a standard for most drums anywhere. There are a couple alternatives to this. Obviously, there's different kinds of stuff. But like in my experience, this is just the one that I like the best. Um... Metal Foundry, pretty great, very deep, like incredible, like huge list of things for like every instrument. So like it's you have like, just the, every kind of variety that you want to have. Every individual instrument um, can have an envelope put to it. Uh, it can change the pitch. It even has like layer limits for each individual one, so that like you can you can like zero in on like do you want round robin at all? Do you want to have every round robin? Do you want to have the the most ludicrous velocity layer sensitivity, which is great for like electronic drum kits, which people you love to use this stuff for. Um, and like those are all like the obvious features of this kind of thing, but like let's actually get into sort of using it, which is what the whole video was about. Which I've, I was like, what three minutes in, I haven't said anything worth anything yet. Good job, me. Um, first thing I do, I come in here and in the mixer, like the mixer is cool. There's lots of built-in effects that, are, that do the good job, like you know whatever. But I don't use any of it. I keep hitting that glass. I don't use any of it pretty much ever. And the only thing I come here to do is to either screw around with like the panning because there's default panning kind of laid in laid in here and. Uh, you can also do stuff like switch polarity of like overheads and room mics, which would be kind of a cool idea. But what I do is I come in here, right click this and click on multi-channel, bam. And what this does is uh, before that, this was all coming out output one, one and two, everything all at once. But now it's coming out 
uh, individual outputs for each individual mixer track inside uh, inside Superior Drummer. To make this work in FL, you have to go into the uh, channel settings window, go to processing, and then click on auto map outputs. And now the 16 outs that are, are available are going to be the 16 outs that, are, that come offset from your position inside FL. So if I make a loop. Yeah, whatever you know loops so now it's showing up as individual mixer inserts in the individual mixer inserts and this is where i do all the mixing like i don't, I don't really do any of the mixing inside of superior drummer although you could if you really felt like it this is i just use the stuff i want to use so the mics the whole mic position thing is really what makes superior drummer like the coolest thing ever and also particularly useful for what i was talking about before about the whole making it worse like making it um like a sampled kind of thing um because really, if you think about those old recordings, like I even have a few, uh, just kind of sitting around. Like, you know. Like in the ye old Amen break. And... Like, obviously, these were done with different microphones, and they were done in different recordings, and they're old, and the vinyl. There's a lot of reasons why they sound the way they do. But a pretty big reason why they sound the way they do is because they use less mics. Uh, the close miking, multi miking, super tight like drum recordings was kind of hard to do and expensive back then, and it got a little bit easier as time went on. And then people did more of it in the '80s and the '90s, and you know with metal bands and whatever. And then samples took over, and that was the end of that. But before then, like th th that that sound was really just like instead of having all these different mics, you really just had a mic. So like if I, for example, went to like the ambient mic over here. Actually, just kind of sounds already like like that. And if I if I you know pay attention to the spectrum of the other guy, I could like EQ this in such a way that it would actually sound quite a lot like those old breaks. And then the rest of it is just like picking instruments that sound kind of like them, and then uh, pitching them up or down to fit like you know the particular feel of it. And like that's you know typical drum processing stuff. Um, which you've probably already been doing a lot of for regular drum sounds. So just doing it, you just have that option to do that here, and it even sounds pretty okay. Like if I if I pitch up and down like there's obviously a limit to how like the like how far you can go with them but you can go pretty far like i'm pretty sure that's not them just upping the pitch of it like that i i, I think some of them even have different samples but there's a little bit of it i don't really know i think they specified some of that in some of the other ones but um other kits that is but even if this is just regular pitch change like it still works out pretty okay, you know, depending if you don't want to go too far. And of course, in between that, they also have sound like snares that are already the, that high or low, and that going higher doesn't actually screw it up that much. Same thing with kicks and toms and cymbals, especially cymbals. I like screwing around with the pitch because like if if it sounds too samey to you, like this happens a lot when you're using a sample library, like, you get super familiar with it and you can start to hear it everywhere. And the way that you get away from that is you just screw with pitches of things. If you have like the, sa the snares and cymbals that sound a certain way, it is, you just pitch them up or down, and they become wholly different instruments. Like the, the, the spectrum of everything changes because of it. Because these are percussive instruments, and while they have har like quote unquote harmonic content, they're really mostly just tones. And that means that while we can't really get a note out of it, unless we try really hard with things like tuned instruments, that means that like any small change of like the noise of a cymbal up or down is really just alters the whole landscape of your spectral kind of usage. Um, and then back, of course, to reverse engineering stuff, a big part of that is paying attention to spectral usage. And like I said about the other guy, if I was paying attention to that, then you could use it to sort of conform what you're doing to, what that's hap to what's happening there. It's really a bunch of trial and error and just looking at the analysis and matching it up or doing it by ear. It's not, it's not a huge amount of like incredible engineering involved in that. It's just that you're just doing it. Um, yeah, so there, there are a shit ton of mics just available and like the metal foundry in particular has almost all of them and the only one that the only, only ones i think i have more are the roots pack which is the their jazz kit they have sticks and they have brushes and other stuff like mallets or whatever it's like pretty it's pretty in depth and what makes these things crazy what makes it what makes this library 33 gigs by itself is largely that you could have mic bleed because not only can you have mics like uh you know the overhead and different kinds of overheads and, and like also the big ass chamber mics that have like all the reverb in it like this is 
that's not an affected sample. That's actually the recorded sample because they had a mic in a, like, all these mics were set up on a kit in the room that they played and they captured everything all at one time. So whenever you hear one hit, that one hit is the same hit that was recorded at that time on all these mics, which, you know, it's nice and realistic sounding. Um, but the bleed part, the bleed part is really killer. So like, over here, you saw me like engage this, like it wasn't on by default. And I had to come in here into like the edit window and actually pick on individual instruments. And this is where like, the crazy stuff that we can do with it starts to happen starts to be a thing um because you can choose like i could i could put just a snare in there have big snare reverb but then not have that nothing else or like bleed a little bit of it in in or out on one thing or another and then that's true for every single mic including the close mics even the close like kick mic for example of which by the way there's an in uh, there's a there's uh, right and left first for the double kick kind of stuff. It is actually different kick drums and then there's also out So you have inside the kick drum and you have outside a kick drum um, Some of them even have subs like a sub mic on some of the larger kits So you have you have lots of options here But it's important to point out that you might notice that they're grouped up already the whole all the kicks kind of go out into one kick thing So even though we have three different kick mics, we still just have the one kick sound So like you and you can actually make this like this is just the, the, the default multi-channel configuration Which if you want you can manually pick you know which which outs you want of the ones that are available um as you see there's 32 uh paired mono outs which is to say that there's 16 stereo channels which is why we have the 16 outs it's a bit of a limitation honestly because if i did uh actually put an individual out for everything i would have far more than the 32 that there are um which is why they're grouped up like this smart ones like you know the kicks are together and all the snares are together look at, look at this there's there's uh, a top and a bottom mic but there's a condenser mic and a dynamic mic on the snare and then there's also the, the side trash mic and like all of that are their own thing like the bottom mics are their own thing the trash is in the bottom mic group and by default actually the bottom mic has bleed built into it because that's what you hear in a real drum kit you hear the kick in the wires you hear like other things in there but like, this is what i mean by that like here's the kick drum like here'd be just solo to all the kick stuff you know neat and then if i just come in here and murder it with bleed You can actually hear it in the mic, which is what recording a real drum kit is like. like. You just don't have control over what gets into what. You can try really hard, and there's lots of interesting techniques and technologies that exist out there to kind of m mitigate this, but there's really no way around it. And that limits how far you can push stuff in certain applications. So like, if you want those limitations, then you can have them, and then you, after you, are, you are actually forced to treat it like a real drum recording. Because for all intents and purposes, at that point, it is. Because remember, there were no effects on these sounds. They just were recorded. That's where they are. They're all the same sample. They're all the same mics. If you put them all on, put all the bleed on, you play a beat, there's not really anything that can distinguish it from being a real drum recording. Even if you don't even, even if you don't like, you know, mess around with velocity levels like I did, it will still feel and sound like a real drum kit. Because there are people out there who are that mechanical in their playing, especially session players. Oh boy. Um, so that's like a pretty, a pretty important thing to do. Uh, Sometimes, like, I haven't, I don't actually think ever on the channel have I ever actually used bleed. Um, it was something I cared more about when I was uh, really trying to get into, like, metal stuff, because I really wanted to get the technique down. But as it turns out, no one else does, and they just kind of don't have bleed on. So that ended up kind of being a thing. But, like, if I'm, if I'm going to, like, if I'm going to do that, like, old school kind of thing, like, where everything is bled, everything is bled and everything else, because generally when these things were recorded, the, all those funk tracks, they were all in the same room and just recorded stuff with what's there. So, like, screwing around with room mics is, is super important and screwing around with, like, how, like, loud the close mics are because that, that like, modern sharpness is what detracts it from sound like those older breaks. Um, and so, like, screwing around with that is, you know, pretty constructive for that in that regard. Um, as far as like actually writing stuff though, like there's there are a couple things that work out pretty great. There, there's there's a humanizing feature in here. There's actually like a button somewhere. I forget where it is. I think it's on symbols specifically. Uh, there's a term. I don't remember where it is. That's oh yeah, there's a humanized section over here. There's randomizing, alternating, that kind of thing. Um, semi sequential, that kind of stuff. But there's a specific thing that exists on these, and I'm trying on like on the symbols. I don't remember where it is or what it, or, like. Okay, well, I don't remember where it is, but what it's supposed to do is that it actually it kind of dampens secondary hits of symbols so that it simulates what's like to hit the symbol after you've already hit it, which is different than if you just hit the symbol when it was, you know, static, which sounds kind of weird if you go static hit, static hit, static hit, static hit, right, right, next, right one after the other. Um, so that that's pretty neat. But that, that just happens under the hood uh, most of the time. I'm pretty sure it's just on. 
And if not, there's an option somewhere and it does that for symbols. Um, but like I tend to, like I leave whatever the default those options are on. And there's also plenty of stuff you can do in MIDI to kind of help with that. For example, toms. Um, like a pretty common beat to do, I like a thing to do is to have like some kind of tom groove going on. And like, you know, you play them with both hands and you hit stuff. And then like along with hitting stuff, you're also like hitting kick drum just on and off and whatever now if i just play them like that that's you know it sounds like a hit but it sounds like a hit because everything is like perfectly phase aligned but um in order to humanize this what we have to make sure is that because in real life very very rarely does ever do you ever hit two things that perfectly aligned and so the sound that we're looking for it actually isn't one of like perfect hit but a little bit of an offset which I tend to do just manually. I'll just be like, nah, 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 whatever, you know, right? Remember, we had two kicks. Did I turn off? Oh, I am soloing everything, ha! And we're hearing it in the, the mic, derp. There you go. So you hear that kind of like the flammy nature of it is like much sort of more realistic sounding than like, because that just sounds like a hit. That sounds like you're hitting one thing. But we're having here hitting three things because we have a foot and two arms. And that's so like, you know, that's what you have to sort of simulate. And that's actually kind of another good point. Um, even before I had Superior Drummer, I was always I was always very enamored with the idea of people playing whatever I'm writing, even though that's never going to happen with some of the older stuff. But it means that I was trying to be conscious, unless I was, you know, making jungle, about how many things a person could play at one time. Um... And that's really about a limitation of you have two arms and you have a foot or two feet, I guess, depending on if, if, if you want to do the whole double kick or whatever. But I guess there's also the, the pedal hi-hat. Go watch Jojo Mayer play drums and you'll see what I mean. Because that is not really that tremendous a limitation. But uh, a whole reason why we're bringing up limitations at all is because we have to create a feeling and a sound that is familiar if we're going to use this kind of stuff this way. Um, of course, if we're not doing that, if we're making like the the hardest electro in the world, then like superior drummer isn't really the greatest thing. And like in, in, acoustic drums in general aren't even the greatest thing when it comes to like layering. I guess that kind of stuff. And if you make it too upfront, like what I what I have used them for in the past is just as like a, a top layer of high frequency stuff, because all the really heavy hitting low frequency stuff is already taken care of, a la my electric kicks and snares, or even hats. Sometimes I just I, I just don't really. Like, especially for, like, like really hard, like, bass music stuff, I don't really like Superior Drummer's hats for that. Although, you can very easily turn those hats into the hats that work. Um, one of the reasons why I don't really like them is because my default configuration of using Superior Drummer is usually involving using the room mics and that kind of thing. But you can also not do that, and you can also just make it tight as hell. And, like, that um, envelope stuff I was talking about is quite effective at that. It's like, up here, this envelope stuff is super important. Especially if you're ever if you're gonna compress any of this stuff, because they all have pretty big tails, especially toms. Like look at it go, it's still going, dear God. And if I had like crushed that as hard as I usually want to, it would do that until the sample ended, which is a lot longer than you might think, a lot longer than we can even hear from most of the time. But um, you come up here, we have the envelope. You turn it on, you can use it, and there's different options. You have uh, offset for like uh, waiting waiting to turn on that kind of thing, and then you also have um, Two different kinds of like what it it cares about you have uh, ratio or time you have note on after touch note off some of them have different presets that kind of thing but i usually keep it on note on and use the ratio to determine like how fast it's gonna take so like this guy takes kind of a while but then i can go all the way to hell up in here and have it be stupid short i can even, I can even put some attack in there like you know do one of like typical actual you know, envelope stuff, but I typically just have it be a release thing. See, that's that's respectable length of time. It's about how long we think it, it, it is already. Like, unless you've already, you got like a really, like you're turned way up and you can hear the, the bass frequencies of those reverberating for a while. This is about how long we think it is anyway. So like, that's where I cut it to. And that, of course, changes depending on the mix and that kind of stuff. But, like, it's good to have that option in there. Same thing for, like, rides and symbols. Because if I if I push it really hard um, on certain things, they'll just go forever. Um, and, that, and that sort of thing. So, uh, actually, a good point, uh, because the symbols and stuff are that long, 
uh, most of the bleed that you're going to have is going to be from symbols and that kind of thing, which is why this library is 33 gigabytes large. Um, if I turned on every single thing, if I was, if I didn't turn on 16 bit, so there's this little 16 bit button, you turn this on and it loads 16 bit samples as, as opposed to 24 bit samples. Um, if you, uh, if, if you don't do that, if you turn everything on and whatever you'll get up and then you have every instrument loaded, you'll have like a 15 gig patch and that's neat if you want to go that hard, but as almost there's very few applications where that's that's like like descriptively necessary. Um, I just wanted to make you aware that that was a thing that happens. And my laundry's done. Um, yeah, the rest of the rest of using Superior Drummer is mostly about understanding like the architecture of the outputs because I, I really strive to like not do a lot in it. I, I like, I just have the instruments that are there and I'll write the notes that are present and then I'll do what I want to do up here. And then if I really want to have all the other mics, I can just turn them on. Cause like they're already, they're usually out of the group already. Some of them are grouped together, like um, this overhead and then overhead drummer. It's basically adding an additional overhead mic to the whole thing. Uh, there's, there's ambient close, ambient far. Um, mono close mono far um all fine things and like as we uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna play them i'm gonna demonstrate what they sound like as we do like think about think about like the proximity and the the of the mix about like how this sounds like compared to those older breaks because like i said while the technology was old and the recording medium was even older a lot about what makes that sound sound the way that it does is is really about mic position and not even so much about anything else so like here's all the stuff now with this Tom thing that we're doing. So a cool thing actually about this reverb that seems way too oppressive is that every single one of these um, mixer inserts or really like the, the mic positions actually has one of those essentially envelopes in them. They have this little fader th fade thing, which uh, will take it up, like actually cut it off a bit. So you're not you're not forced to use the whole recorded tail if you don't want to. It is, however, pretty a lot. Like what I was describing earlier about a thing to do, because like. I have put the whole kit in there, and if we're going for realism, then you're going to want to do that. But if you're not going for realism, you can individually control how loud certain in instruments are in certain inserts, which is like super, super good, super good. And because you can like, uh, oftentimes like like toms don't sound super great like that diffuse, so you can just not have them in there and that, and that kind of thing. Uh, let's look, 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 let's look what they sound like though. Uh, by default, it's also worth noting that a lot of these are like sort of pre-leveled um, in a way. That like makes sense, and that's that's fine. You know, it could have been as quiet as it wants to be, because again, I'm doing everything I want to do to it in post. So chamber mic, ambient mono. Is that what this one is? I'm mono far. So that's just like uh, one mic pointed at the drum kit somewhere in the room that's a little bit farther away. Like, and that like you mix that in there with. Let's actually make it a real beat because this, this isn't representative. So I'll, I'll talk about the MIDI in a second because there is a bit, there's somewhat of a trick to knowing where everything is and the mapping. Yeah, I forgot I killed that. Actually, I'm going to do it. I'm going to. <laughs> Neat. All right. So, um, this mono far, mono close, and that actually sounds more like um, some of those older ones a bit more. Because uh, actually, there's a video out there. I mentioned JoJo Mayer. There's a video out there of him doing this like breaks around the world thing, where he's like in like on like a sidewalk somewhere doing his beat and like a bunch of cool visual effects to happen. But like it's it's his kit. 
it's like this tiny kit that's got like this small it's like a it's not even a kick drum it's a tom it's a, it's a floor tom that he turned to a kick drum and like a, a snare and maybe a cymbal and just a mic is kind of aimed at it and that's kind of what it sounds like this is one of the ambient overheads i believe this might just be the overheads no those are overheads so that's uh one of the ambients ambient far probably I believe I told, I think I undid ambient close. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, that's ambient close. Okay, and then here's the, one of the overheads. This is like the actual overhead. That's ambient. Yeah, cool. Like getting the configuration of what, what's, what's in there and you know, it's important to know the names of things, but like one of the reasons why I'm kind of struggle to remember which one's which is because I usually just, I put on multi out, put all the things on, and then I'll have this spread of superior drummer stuff, which by the way, in FL, if you're doing this, um, it's an offset. So if I put effects in here and like an EQ or whatever, or a notebook, cause that's a thing. And then I like move it, the effects don't move with it, but the beat does. So just a forewarning about that because that can get kind of confusing if you're not paying attention, which I have done a lot in the past of, which I have done a lot of in the past. What else we got? Uh, yeah, the, you know, this with the bleed on, the snare, like you know, because you could, these are really tightly mic things too. So you have your whole range of like the tightest snare in the world with the bottom if you want to have that in there too, and the hi hats. Over here would be where the toms go. And I don't really know what that one is. And then you can start to mix up stuff. So like if I turn down most, if I still had them there, that's not necessarily bad, but if I turn them down a bit, turn down the chamber a lot, turn down how loud this guy is, turn up that dude, turn down the actual overheads. It actually works out pretty good. I'll put this here. I'm gonna put one of these in the middle of it. So I personally am not a greatest fan of that particular symbol. It's pretty great, but like, you know, whatever. There's different kinds of like, different ones you can choose. I particularly love the giant beat ride. You probably see me use it all the time. And it's very versatile because it's very bland sounding, which means I can turn it up and down in whatever pitch I want and make it fit with what I'm doing. Let's get a little more kick in there. So now what I was saying before about how, like, because this is really this perfect and you can get it like this great, then, then it's a bit difficult to sort of have that broken quality. Because like we have the regular, we have the nice, you know, mic arrangement quality of it, but it doesn't, it doesn't quite still have the pizzazz of like if I wanted to make a drum and bass track with this, I might have a particular issue with um, making it feel as like legit as some of those older breaks do. And what I do in this in these situations is that I'll just make a loop like this, uh, you know, process it as necessary. Let's actually make it up to speed here. Probably a little too fast, but we'll find out. I mean, basically, where I'm going with this is I'm gonna I'm gonna sample it and then cut it up and use it like like I have to. Like you're basically pretending it's if you don't have Superior Drummer that you just found this loop somewhere and now you're trying to fit it in with stuff as a loop. with whatever errors may be in there because boy were this some like i got i got my education in drums by doing what i described i like i would find uh drum loops just by googling free drum loops and like this is before splice sounds this is before loop masters even and like you could just do just find things that people have in places that's how i found some of those old breaks and i would try really really hard to fit them into songs And you know, kind of so with everyone else. It's it's basically we're describing the whole move, the whole movement of sampling, which has existed and has been a thing since there have been records. And then like you're we basically you're just here to kind of just cut this up and loop it in the way that you would a sample. 
So you, you know, to, to do a fairly common one. Where's the middle bit? There you go. And like that, and not because of those really sharp cuts that aren't flowing naturally and there's no humanization to it. It's the same thing every every time. Now it feels like a sampled sound, and it feels more like sort of what we expect out of this sort of stuff, which is a little bit ironic. And uh, if I if I wanted to really like push that, then it's all about like matching. I haven't I haven't you know I have those old breaks, but like I if I really wanted to nail it, it's all about a being stuff. It's referencing just like everything else is. Um, and the actual like workflow, like the flowing of work inside Superior Jumper really isn't that deep. Uh, like, the hardest part about it is kind of just knowing where all the articulations are, because oh boy, are there are articulations. Like, even the ride, for example, like, you click on whatever you have up here, and there's various, you know, settings up here, and one of them is mapping. And then you get a big list of mappings, and uh, all the various articulations that there are. And, like, when you right-click on them, it'll show you kind of on the piano roll where they are. And you might be noticing these are way the hell up here, and that's because they are. If I this one, like, there's all the different hats. You can see there's, like, a hundred different levels of hats. Like, I, I tend to stick to a pretty simplistic usage of the hats, but, like, if I really, really, really wanted to, there's, like, an amazing, like, depth of opening closed hats. And, like, that's because these this, these kits were not, were, just, were not just well designed in terms of, like, manual articulation where, like, we can be in control of all that at all times. But it's also designed to work well with electronic drum kits so that we can very se like, seamlessly huh, move through um, the hat levels so that we are able to like make it feel like it's a real hi-hat. Um, I personally have played one of those uh, Roland like, TD-20 kits. A friend of mine is a drummer has has one, and it's pretty on point. It's a little scary, actually. Um, <laughs> the toms have rim shots. The snares have a thousand things, too. So, but like there, there's a kind, there's a MIDI convention that uh, like drum libraries and samples use called General MIDI, that has been around since the days of old ass like Yamaha keyboards that have like stupid sounds on them, um, and I've been using it for so long that I haven't memorized really. But like it's Superior Drummer, Superior Drummer uses General MIDI, but then it also has it has because it has way more articulations than General MIDI accounts for, so it just kind of puts stuff in between them, and then those are the ones you gotta go try and find, like this guy. I was using down here. This is the center hit. This is the, or I guess that's center. What's this one called? Edge. I thought cross one that was. Oh, that's rim shot. That's right. So like some of them have different kinds of like other ones. I call this one center and this one's main. Whatever. They're different for every library. But for in, in this case, like those those amount of different snare stuff you can do exist on all, in various places, but you have to find them. Same thing with symbols. There's like. 11 symbols you can have and there's I don't even know how many symbols are allowed like in the regular general MIDI list probably like two or three at most with a ride but you can have three rides if you wanted you can have four like th uh, th three ish chinas and two different stacks like and then splashes and different toms and more toms than you know that your body has time for but it's fucking like you gotta find them all and this is where you find them and it, not only the, not only can you find them here but you can also move them around if you really felt like it you can change like you could put a note on there and you can also make um uh, this is different presets there's general like general midi i'll tell you like you know do you want different ones or the other ones um you can also of course you saw that in there you can save preset mappings if you're kind of into that you can say pre preset everything by the way there's like five different ways to save presets here i'm pretty sure you can save mixer presets you can save a uh, whole it'll call the whole thing like a project you can save it and then, of course in that file you can just save the wrapper settings and that's still a preset that's, it works fine um but this is this sort of is where you find all the mapping stuff um i have never once ever used any of the midi files that are in any of the superior drummer projects or easy drummer projects for, easy drummer projects for that matter is just not something i've ever cared about so i cannot speak at all towards using it although i believe it's pretty great uh have fun with that that's your thing I don't really know what the bounce is for. It's probably it's it's a, like a, a loop of recorder kind of thing. I have to imagine this probably a CPU intensive on some people's computers. Uh, and this is where you, you set up, you know, where all the paths are for all the libraries. Um, in particular, I keep my libraries on specifically SSDs. Um, I used to have a RAID. I do actually still have the RAID zero setup, but I use the RAID zero setup for East West stuff because it's way worse than Superior Drummer in terms of size and demand. 
but um you could just come in here and you, could, you put them on ssds and they just load faster it's not like east west where they stream it it does actually load it all it's just that if you put it on an actual hard disk it will just take a while um and i'm spoiled as hell is what that was but uh yeah back in mapping actually back to the construct because there's, there's actually one more cool thing that's neat about this that helps which is the whole concept of the x drum the x drum is you just put a new drum in there and you can pick from any library you have of any instrument that you want and you like you can tell it like it to be a kick you can tell it to be you know sticks it could be snare and it can come here actually let's do brushes why not and then pick a pick a brush and now we have that and like and now here's the mapping for all that but like no they're not mapped you actually have to you have to put these together now and the kind of the danger about doing this if you're interested at all in realism is that these were different kits recording in different rooms and they have different and whole different mic setups and i don't even know if uh, yeah right because we're in because we're in metal foundry world it's got to play by metal foundry rules versus if we were actually to open up the uh sticks library let's actually just go do that like the mic settings in here are a little bit more robust because they have like deca trees, which I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It could be decha, I guess. I don't know language. Um, and like there's a little, there's sort of, you know, so fitting and like overhead over the saxophone player because this is a jazz kit. So there's mics in the jazz positions, and like that's keeping track of that kind of stuff is what's going to matter when, it, when you want it to go up, I guess, for ultimate realism. But if you don't, then, you know, you can just kind of put stuff in there. But when you do put stuff in there, like when you come in here with the X drum, this part I haven't totally figured out perfectly because it's a little bit weird, but you go into microphone assignment and it, like, tells you where you can kind of put the thing. And, like, because you have default set There's also, like, you, you can just do default settings. And also for MIDI, um, there's, like, steel default, steel current, and steel second position. Which is like if I have more than one ride, there's there's different positions for rides, and you can have more than like a whole other ride from some other instrument, and then you tell it to steal the second position, and then your MIDI will be a, a ready readily available for that. Um, if you want to layer stuff, then what you can do is you can like if I had this kick and that kick, I want to layer it. Um, if I go into mapping, and like I go to this guy, this guy's up in here. So if I come here and just say hit C1, and you have this join and replace object, and, and it'll make uh, a node, and now it'll play both. And if you have them coming out of different mic microphones, they'll come out of different microphones. They don't necessarily have to be on the same microphone. It's usually just easier if they are. Um, so, like, and actually, I don't really do a lot of this because, to be totally honest, it's a little bit tedious. I actually personally find it easier if I'm going to layer stuff just to have more than one superior drummer. But um, that might be, like, a little too insan intense for people. I tried to say insane and intense. And I almost said incense, which wouldn't have meant anything. Um, so that, I just wanted to show you that it was possible because... People want to enjoy that. Uh, and there's also like there's also individual instrument levels. Like you can come in here and just be like, you can make that louder. So even if like not necessarily in the like the mics that they're in, but like whatever mics they're in, that particular instrument will be louder. So you can kind of break the rules a little bit there. Personally, like the whole point of having superior drummer is the rules. Like, cause if I didn't care about the rules and I wouldn't need the six thousand round robin samples it has, I wouldn't I wouldn't need the bleed, which by the way, you can download these things without the bleed, you can install them without the bleed, which dramatically reduces the size of the library. So you don't have to have I don't know how many hundreds of gigs I have here that are just these guys. You can just take the ones that you want. And um or and, and like then use a 16 bit. Like there's lots of nice space saving ways that you can use it. Um but I just don't, because I don't need to anymore. But, uh, yeah. What was classic view? Oh, boy. That's classic as shit. Look at that. Okay, yeah. I mean, I personally enjoy the strange animations, but, you know, you might not. Um, I think that's everything that I care about this. I have obviously not touched everything that Superior Driver can do. I even look at any of the effects that are in here, but this is really mostly just about how I use it, because people are curious about that kind of thing. Um, if you do have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all the good stuff. And as usual, have a nice day. I really hope I didn't forget anything, but I probably did.